Hi there. How are you? I'm Steve Saunders, and I own the little role-playing game in print, Black Goat Games. And I've decided to start recording videos of myself. Um, I call it Black Goat TV. So hi, welcome. Uh, we are in my little teeny office here. Uh, it's actually a storage room. It's upstairs, and it's super duper hot. It's like it is like the black hole of Calcutta, um, or any other black hole. It's really hot. So that was, that was hot, right? Anyway, so I want to spend this first installment talking about the role playing games I love um, and what has inspired me over the years to create what I consider to be a good role playing game. So I sit here and I read a lot. I, this is where I work. I write copy. I do uh, editing. I'm currently editing one of my favorite game designers novel new novel which is quite an honor and awesome and I really need to get more on that because he's gonna need more editing but the thing is uh, yeah so I'm here and I have I also have a bunch of stuff I've been selling and so up here's a whole bunch of old gaming stuff new gaming stuff so I just want to start with some of my favorite things that I have enjoyed over the years enjoy now uh, and having to probably have a hard time letting go because I don't mean to make anyone angry out there, but I actually don't like having a lot of physical stuff anymore. Um, I prefer PDFs, not just because I create them, but they're easily bookmarked. I, I really don't mind paying like twenty dollars for a PDF now because if it's if it's indexed well and bookmarked well, I can use it on my laptop at a convention or whatever. I, I have back problems, all kinds of other health issues that preclude me from carrying a massive fuck ton of books around as much as I like them. And I'm pushing 40 now. It's really difficult to justify having a nerd den, you know, where I can show off all my cool shit and really I, I just don't care anymore. So my bookshelves keep getting smaller and I keep, uh, you know, just really keeping only what I don't want to get rid of. So let's start with my favorite role-playing game of all time, like ever. Now I started with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons back in 1984. My really good friend Logan at the time, I mean if he ever sees us, he would, hey, I haven't seen it since fourth grade. Um, 1984 summer, I was eight, uh, we were going to the North Sea. It was my parents' turn to go to Monaco or Monaco um, for their adult vacation which left me with Logan and his family and on the way to our little uh, basically Germans and uh, Dutch people they really like like little RV type things and campers and so our little camper trip or from parks to little campers at Zeeland uh, to go to the North Sea which is like swimming imagine ocean stuff in the winter, and that's what's like North Seas all the time, and it's raining, it's like, oh yeah, it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit, we love it, it's topless weather. So on our way to this place, which I was kind of dreading at the time, um, Logan said, hey, have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? And I was like, no, and he goes, well, this is advanced, Dungeons and Dragons. So Logan showed me the stuff in the car, we started rolling up characters, I had to have a ninja, because I was really into ninjas at the time, I think it was eight and I want him to be a Greek ninja because I've always been absolutely fascinated with history and Hel Hellenic history became one of my first obsessions. Um, so I became a Greek ninja. And this is about a year before Oriental Adventures uh, hit its shelves. So there I was in the car, rolling dice, and I was hooked, completely hooked forever and ever. Flash forward to about 1986, where we have some of the books, and I got the player's guide, I got the player's book, handbook, the DM's guide, uh, Monster Manual, I think Fiend Folio was actually my first one I picked up, um, if I remember correctly. It might have been Monster Manual too. I have a really good memory, but sometimes these stuff gets kind of blurred together because all I did was spend my money on gaming stuff. Uh, and my parents made me earn it. Bless their souls. So the game that really hooked me though is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is the fucking best game I've ever played. It is my favorite role-playing game. I'm sure you have a favorite role-playing game that may not be Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, but, and I, I appreciate that, I can respect that, 
but deep down, I don't give a shit. This is my favorite game. I still play first edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Second edition was great. Chris Premis, or is it Promise? I'm very sorry, man. Um, did a fantastic job creating a, 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 a taking and retailing this game that's just captured my imagination at like 10 years old. And it, when he did second edition uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, it was gorgeous art, beautiful. But this, this is my first love. It's kind of like. Not to sound crass or anything, but it's kind of like, uh, I mean, most people I know lose their virginity, and it's kind of like a drunken escapade, I remember, but this is like the first time you actually really hooked up with someone, and you super loved them, and like the sun rose and set on their very being. That is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay for me. I actually remember this more fondly than most people I've loved. That may sound weird, maybe even psychopathic. I don't know, but I fucking love this game. So, anyway, there I am, right? Kid Steve, which is a lot like adult Steve with less swearing. So, um, so I got this, and that's what I had. The, this is the set. This is my soft cover version. Uh, my hard cover version. The cover fell off. I wrote Roll Hammer on it. I still have it somewhere, actually. Um, but uh, this is better for demonstration purposes. Um, it has a plastic cover on it. Um, so this, this, like the art, everything about it just hooked me. The the game. I I really enjoyed how. All of this uh, played out with the careers. So, for you, though, for those of you who don't know, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is a game where you roll up a character. They had in the first edition, you had different classes you were part of, and that's like a like a soldier warrior type, or uh, a fighter type, uh, a priest type, um, an academic type, or a rogue type, and then you roll in a career chart. And that was part, half the fun. Is like. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna get? And it was, you know, it's all charts, random charts for like, you know, you can end up being an agitator. That's like somebody who hands out pamphlets and pisses people off. And uh, you could be an initiate, a jailer, a hunter, uh, an herbalist. Uh, you could be an outrider or a noble if you're really lucky. Um, and so you'd have these these groups that would come together of like a beggar, a noble, an outrider, and no one ever had a wizard's apprentice, and they sucked anyway because they couldn't really do anything. They were very weak, and their masters always beat the hell out of them all the time. And never let them go anywhere because part of Warhammer back then was to be a, you know your career. You have to follow your career and come up with good reasons why you're advancing. You don't just buy all the trappings, the stuff that comes with your your uh, career, and just go and become like go from like noble to. I don't know, just a car, whatever. Um, you or or judicial champion, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, you have to earn it. It becomes a, becomes a little role playing, and a lot of the rules can be vague at the time. And because really, like Games Workshop, this was like later on. I discovered a lot of this art was just filler art, and they they you know for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and it really, uh, you know, they, they're selling miniatures and. All this other stuff, and it became this self-contained, awesome role-playing game with some really cool pages of like miniatures and stuff. And so, yeah, they they had the Olden Holler contract in here as the as the introductory adventure. It's pretty well laid out. It's got some cool stuff in it. Um, it's very much like Dungeons and Dragons meets Call of Cthulhu. Now, a lot of people will talk about Grimdark which is a relatively new term that was used to describe Warhammer 40,000, a uh, miniatures game, and how grim and dark it was. Uh, and that um, is used to describe a lot of times with uh, nostalgia uh, about worm fantasy roleplay, how it was so grim dark back in the old days, and everyone had like weird worm syphilis, and you had to play, you all played beggars who had like rat faces, and oh my god, it was horrible, and everything sucked. And it rained razor blades while everyone went out and the dark gods laughed at them because they couldn't get bread. Uh, in reality, well, in reality, it was pertaining to the role-playing game. Just, just kind of go with me here. Um, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay was just really more of a tongue-in-cheek, uh, cynical look at fantasy adventure. Uh, everyone uh, that was your lord or whomever was a some asshole who was either in it for themselves, in it for money, in it for the dark gods, or or not. 
Uh, no one ever believed you if you saw anything weird, even though it was a fantasy game or a fantasy setting. That was very much like Europe, and the main setting for Roman Fantasy Roleplay is very similar to the Holy Roman Empire. In fact, it's actually called the Empire. Very German. But if you saw a rat man called Skaven, no one would no one believed a goddamn thing. And there were witch hunters and bounty hunters everywhere. And it was that's what I liked about it at the time. It was dark and gritty. But honestly, if it was as grim dark as people say it, it was supposed to be, I would have never gotten into it at 10. Because, I mean, come on, I'm a kind of a fucked up guy, but really? Like, at 10, I wasn't like that. Uh, I don't even think I said the F word, really, until I was like 12 or 13, you know? It's, so, it's a, uh, you know, it, so this really captured my imagination, mainly with the careers. It made it seem a lot more real. The magic system was very lacking. Hogshead put out like, a magic book later on, uh, Realms of Sorcery, which I actually found recently. I was super excited about that. And, yeah, my current obsession is buying more Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay First Edition stuff. I would love to find Sold Down the River, the Marion Bird book. I have a buddy out there. Hi, Bo. He's got it. I'm extraordinarily envious of him for that. However, I can talk about Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay all day long, but I'm not going to, because his office is goddamn hot. I need to get on this other stuff and get going soon. So, there we go. My favorite role-playing game. Let's see what else we got here. Real quick, Judge Dredd, the D20 version. You may be wondering what my favorite comic book is. Well, ever since I was a child, uh, it has been Judge Dredd, specifically 2000 AD, which is a weekly anthology comic book that comes out from the United Kingdom. Well, I said weekly, right? So every week, and its primary star is Judge Dredd, who's been there since Prague, or issue number two. Uh, from 19, early 1977. I mean, Judge Dredd in 2008 barely predates Star Wars. So, I've been into Judge Dredd since about 1982. A while back, years ago, maybe 10 years ago, Jesus, when did this come, this come out? Uh, Mongoose Publishing, whom I love, uh, produced this game, oh, 12 years ago, which is the Judge Dredd D20 game. Um, I played it a few times, I have all the books, I collect them. I won't sell them. Sorry. Uh, I absolutely love them, mainly just for the fluff and the material. It's a really good, a really good reference guide for the comics. Layout was dirt simple. This is still back during the time when Mongoose would have gobs of typos. By the way, you can hire me for editing. But like, there's, there's, but this book is actually very well laid out with great art. Um, there's my, one of my favorite characters right there is uh, Judge DeMarco. Uh, she fell in love with Judge Dredd, stopped being a judge, and became a private investigator. Um, I think of these, uh, of Judge Dredd and the Dreadverse as my other family. And it is my, it has been my goal since I was a child to write Judge Dredd comics. Uh, I, well, I've done comic writing before and worked in the comic industry for, you know, and most of it was great. Uh, but... And I love comics, and I learned how to read reading comics when I was very small. But you know what? My cat's looking at me. Yes, Luna, you know what? Um, the only comic I've ever wanted to write. I mean, hell, I'd write Batman if you if you asked me to. Yeah, I like Batman. He's okay. Crazy guy in a bat suit. Whatever. You know what I like? Judge Dredd. That's what I want to write. That's all I want to write. That's really the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I'm really need to send something off I've been meaning to send off for a while but I'm scared I never get scared I, I'm not scared of anything I don't have to say that to be like sound like some kind of tough guy I'm just really not scared of anything I think it's a brain disorder but I am a little bit nervous about submitting anything or talking following anything up or whatever but one day I'll be writing Judge Dredd and then I get to watch everyone from the 2080 forms fucking hate my guts so I thought I just mentioned Judge Dredd really quick and my obsession with with Joe and also uh, the D20 role-playing game, which, thanks to Matt Sprange and his company, Mongoose, I have a whole ton, metric fuck ton of uh, Judge Dredd books, and I may be the only person in Victoria, BC, who has that much Judge Dredd shit. Next up, okay. Hackmaster. This is the fucking best iteration of AD&D that has ever been released, period, hands down, you can all quit now. Um, now, there's a lot of cool OSR, OSR stuff out there. Um, that's a old school renaissance or old school revival for you. Those of you not in the know, just watching this video because you like looking at my handsome mug. 
Uh, but uh, there's a whole story behind this, and I won't get into it, but Kenzer Company got a hold of the license to make a Dungeons and Dragons parody, and they did. And it is probably the most awesome thing ever. Um, you really can't play it like the book tells you to because it's too goddamn complicated. One of these times I'm going to show off the Game Master screen, which is insane. It's got like 30 some panels. Um, but look at that. I don't even know what that is. That's an earning honor, earning honor dice. Just for earning honor, we're looking at this. Can you see that? Then there's this, this chart. These guys put a lot of work in this. This is the Game Master's Guide for like critical hits. It's like D10,000. I'm not kidding. This is a trove of material. It is the most entertaining game I've ever read. So jolly at all you guys rock like that this i've been wanting to say that to you to you for a long long time i know i've said it on facebook and other other places but you've made the most entertaining game i've ever only played once or twice so i have gods of hackmaster stuff once again i'll never get rid of them um the new hackmaster have some of the stuff um but it just wasn't the same it's a great game i highly recommend uh the new hackmaster edition uh but i don't play it I don't have time to, usually. That's probably one of the things when you start writing stuff that you don't really get to play much. But I do recommend it. Uh, but man, this just, just so, it, there was like, what, eight Hacklopedias of Beasts? Like, it was insane. Just like, I have them all. And it's, and, it, and also, this is an excellent resource for anyone who plays Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, any kind of OSR D20 stuff, anything like that. This shit's for you. You need to get it. So, recommended. Next up, The Black Company D20 Game, written by one Robert J. Schwalm. Rob, I already told him before, I thanked him on one of my, uh, my, my products because really he's a his stuff is a huge inspiration. He writes tons and tons of role-playing materials. The guy's a fucking machine. I can't write that much. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of lazy. It's easier to sit here and talk, but that guy, Holy shit, he's like the Dan Abnett of role-playing games. Dan Abnett writes, has written some role-playing game material, but if you guys know who he is, Dan Abnett's a Warhammer author, and oh my god, like that guy is prolific. Like there must, they, he must be a clone of a million clones. Rob Similar, he's, uh, he writes a lot of stuff. Well, way back when, at the first Penny Arcade Expo, back when it was actually called that, and then we started calling it PAX later on, I guess, um, I went to another nearby convention called Dragon's Foot, Dragon's Bane, Dragon's Horde, something, something with a dragon, dragon flight. That's what it was called, and it was basically just like a couple rooms in a hotel. It was both both these conventions are going on in Bellevue, one at the Main Bower Center or whatever it's called, and another one at this hotel nearby. And I went down there, I saw this book. I'm a huge fan of the novels. I bought the shit out of it right there on the spot. I'm a cheap bastard. I barely buy anything new. I bought this, loved it. If you haven't read The Black Company, not getting into it, some of the best fantasy novels you ever read, especially for like dark, gritty fantasy with very little descriptive prose. It's just more like if you want a guy who's just called a lieutenant or something like that, that's the kind of shit for you. So Green Ronin uh, published this, and I'm a huge fan of Green Ronin as well because they're always quality, always. Like I, I don't think they've released one shitty product. Ever. I mean, they made, they release products I'm not really into, but they release quality. Like they could re they could release a game that's just called Shit on a Platter, and I'd probably pick it up and read it. So also pick up their Game of Thrones uh, role playing game, uh, which is also written by Rob Schwalm because he's everywhere. He's like a fucking ninja. So um, anyway, uh, this black black company you don't really have to be into the novels to get it. You can just start reading it. Goes over the. Uh, it goes over everything in detail. Um, one of the great things about this book um, is for a D20 game, it makes an excellent backdrop if you don't want gods in your game and very interesting rules for magic. Um, the, everything is very sparsely described. Oh my god, a map? This stuff is really rare in here. Um, but it is a beautiful role-playing offering. And I'm sure one of these days I'll get into it. I'm trying to make this more of an overview. So there we go, Black Company. Next up, the Dying Earth role-playing game, which I've never played. 
I'm a huge fan of Jack Vance. In fact, my youngest son is named partially after him. My, uh, his mother and I have different reasons for naming our children, uh, but this was definitely that and Vance Astro. If you know who that is off the bat, you know I'm a fucking nerd. And so Dying Earth, some of my favorite stuff in the world. Uh, this game, more of a theatrical kind of game. Uh, there's, it's a pretty cool, like, I think, it, I, I don't want to criticize it because there, there are a few things I found, like, it wasn't very engaging as a role-playing game, like, you just don't, like, just want to jump in. You have to really do your homework on it, but it's very well laid out. It even has shiny pages. Look at these shiny, shiny pages. Um, and the guys who put this out at Pelgrim Press uh, and Robin D. Laws really made a fantastic treat of a game that if you find it, you should totally pick it up. And when I was going through the stuff I was going to sell, um, I almost sold this, but I was like, no, you know what? Like, I fucking love Jack Vance. Robin Laws is a boss. And so, and the rest of these guys, like John Sneed and Peter Freeman, and everyone else that did this book are angels. They're fantastic. And it's a very well laid out book. And so I keep it around for inspiration for my own stuff, uh, mainly in layout and stuff like that. Now, the next thing, I'm gonna pop into your eyes. It's gonna make somebody groan, but you gotta love it because tenacity is a trait that always impresses me. I mean, even, even if it's a situation, like some horrible situation where a guy kills like 16 families with a butter knife, what a horrible thing, right? Horrible. But I admire his tenacity. And I could say some other stuff that's more political, but I'm not going to. I appreciate tenacity, even if I hate the person who's doing it. Now, I don't hate this person, no, don't get me wrong, but they are mocked incessantly. And that is World of Cinnabar. So I'm going to name drop uh, Eric Troutman really quick. He and his wife, lovely wife Gabby, um, own and run, well, I think she primarily owns and runs it, but Eric Troutman's a comic book writer, and Gabby and him run uh, Olympic Comics Cards and Games? Olympic Games. Uh, it's in Lacey, Washington, last I checked, near Olympia. Probably the best game store I've ever been in. Sorry, everyone else and comic books and toys, it is wonderful. Like, I really wish I could go back more frequently. It's weird because it's just like right over there, but it's like living on the moon, you live in Victoria. He gave this to me as a gift. So the world of Cinnabar, I haven't flipped there for a while, but man, I loved reading this shit. It's got flying laser bears, the most fucked up like world creation story ever. It's basically like rifts if it over rifts itself. And uh, it's nuts. Um, I'll read the back copy really quick. The world of Cinnabar, tired of being forced to buy book after book to play a game, equally frustrated with gaming systems that limit not only your imagination, but your character's abilities as well. If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then welcome to the world of Cinnabar, the ultimate in trans-genre gaming, which contains all the necessary rules to play the game within one single comprehensive book. The planet Cinnabar is in reality a starship created by the god Aridius from the planet Mars. Hmm. It, is, it was transformed into an ark to carry the descendants of Earth to a new home star system to save them from a galactic holocaust. Within this book you will find the history of the world, the world ship and descriptions of the geography, economy, and society, along with detailed maps of 16 major land masses and the solar system she exists in, plus tables for random solar system generation. Hmm, she existed. Interesting. Okay, you're like, oh, a complete character creation system encompassing 20 traditional character classes such as, ready for it, Mage Tiger. That sounds traditional. Who is a super martial artist, spell user who never sleeps, or a psionic biosynthesizer that specializes in demolitions. Biosynthesizer. Basic races, like Gnome, who knows ninjutsu. That's pretty cool, actually. Ninja gnomes, like that shit sells me right there. Or a winged warrior who can become an alchemist. Sounds legit. Sounds cool. Non-class adventurers who may choose from hundreds of skills, cybernetics, and mutations, such as human archaeologists who can wield magic, lift two tons, and in a pinch, play lead guitar in a rock band. Okay. 30 variant races, ranging from Arachmen to mutant vampires. Not just any vampires, but like mutant vampires. I guess the kind, the one from like what was it called? Daybreakers or whatever the hell that was called. Um, 
or Blade 2, maybe. Over 300 creature or monster descriptions, including flying laser bears. Including several alien races and their special technology items, provisions and equipment of all types, including cybernetics and the specifics for constructing and operating starships, a carefully detailed combat system. Oh boy, is it ever. That is simple and easy to learn. Uh, which gives you quick and manageable second-by-second -second control over every type of situation. Over 1,000! A fucking thousand! He's not kidding either. Spells, psionics, and character and monster abilities. The specifics of characters to engineer and create their own provision spells and special abilities, weapons, vehicles, computers, enhanced items, monsters, and mutations, hundreds of skills and cybernetic alterations. A game system that allows for all levels of play, including the specifics for immortality, demigodhood, and beyond. Beyond, huh? Five indexes and two tables of contents for quick referencing. There is no quick referencing in this book. I have studied it extensively. It is fun as hell to read, but holy shit, is it a mind splurge. Now, Raven, who I actually, he may not remember me. I used to work at uh, the Vogue nightclub in Seattle. I remember talking to him a few times. Really nice guy. Um, nothing against him personally. And I'm not going to mock the game because I really appreciate the tenacity. He put this shit out in what? He put a single book system out with over 400 pages of 100 illustrations, 50 character classes and a thousand spells. He did this in his team uh, with Bryce Thelen uh, in 1993. Like he, he, he did it, I mean, he, he, he worked on it over like a decade, but like, Jesus, I can barely put out a, a fucking PDF. You know, I'm like working on little things too for God knows how long, and I keep keep tinkering with it. This dude puts out a tome of awesome shit, so you can make fun of it all you want. It's not sick and twisted. It's simply weird and interesting, and it's a total kitchen, kitchen sink game. And I'm proud of him for putting it out. And he's taken so much shit for it that, you know, why? He's a cool guy. He's got a huge imagination, and I can appreciate that. So I'll never, ever fault him for that. Is the game silly in parts? Oh, hell yeah it is. Is it is it something that I would be proud of? Mm, maybe not. But I'm a different person, and I appreciate it. And it is a book I'm not selling. I'm not getting rid of it. Sure, if you want to pay me a thousand bucks for it, I'll sell it to you. But honestly, this is one of the only things I'd bring to a convention if I knew Raven was there, to have him sign and write something really funny in it for me. Because that's how much I appreciate the world of Cinnabar. Most game designers should have brick when they saw it. Should have brick laughing. But he put it out. I know tons of people don't have their like dream game published or anything like that. So, yeah. Anyway, this is really running long in the tooth. I have a lot more stuff I want to share. Um, I just want to show you where I am, who I am, get an idea. So some of you will say, oh, that guy, I don't like that guy. That's cool. You know, hey, I like everyone, but if you don't like me or don't like this whole thing, that's totally okay. You don't have to watch this. Uh, if you're entertained by it, great. Um, and I probably should stop filming also because I think I'm supposed to meet my partner and, and, and she's going to probably kick my ass. So um, anyhow, thank you so much for uh, tuning in to Black Goat TV, the first episode. Um, I probably won't edit this very much because I'm kind of lazy that way. Sorry. Uh, so I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll be sharing some more stuff with you soon. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Game the hell.